Hey, my name is Jeff Kramer. I'm a photographer out here in Colorado, and I just took a picture of the International Space Station flying across the face of the moon. So stick around, and I'll show you how it's done. So the International Space Station is orbiting the Earth at around 17,500 miles an hour. That means that it makes about 16 orbits in a 24-hour period. But the trick is we need to figure out when the camera, the space station, and the moon are all going to be lined up so we can get the photo of the space station transiting in front of the moon. To do that, I'm going to use this program. This is called transitfinder.com. And what you do, you set your location, you set the time span, then you hit calculate, and it'll tell you when the space station is going to transit in front of the moon. So here you can see today, on November 26th, there's going to be a transit occurring at 6.07 p.m. We click Show on Map, and then we can see anywhere along this blue line is where I'm going to need to be standing to capture the photo. So I live in Pueblo, and we'll zoom in. And you can see that out here in the prairie is kind of a good place to stand. So we'll be right along the center line. Now if we go back to this screen, we'll see something really interesting. We'll click More Information, and you can see that down here it says the ISS will be illuminated. And what that means is there's going to be sunlight falling on the ISS while we're taking the photo. And the reason for that is because of the altitude of the ISS. So if we go over here, we can type in the approximate time that the transit's going to happen. And we'll see here that it's going to be nighttime. Now this side of the globe is night, and this side of the globe is in day. But if we take it, we'll rotate it across, we'll see that the space station is so high up in the air that the sunlight is still hitting it. And that's why it will be illuminated, and hopefully we'll get a lot of color detail and some really interesting detail in the photograph. Even though I'm going to be taking the picture from out in the prairie, that's not exactly where the space station is going to be. I went to a website called sapflare.com that gives tracking information for the space station. It showed that at the exact moment I was going to be taking the picture, the space station was going to be flying over a place just to the southeast of Fort Sumner, New Mexico. I thought that it would be interesting to see the straight line distance from my camera to the space station as it was flying over. First I used the Sapflare program to show the space station's altitude at the moment it was flying by. Then I used Google Earth to find the straight line distance from where I'm going to be standing to where the space station is going to be flying over. Finally, I input those distances and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the distance, which comes out to be 584 kilometers. So I'm out here in the prairie now, and we're the, the exact center line of the transit. The time's 5.10, so we've got about an hour until the transit occurs. You can see I have my telescope, the camera set up, you can see the moon up here in the background. So since we've got an hour, I thought I'd take some time and I'd explain all the setup and all the equipment that I have to take this photo. So it got kind of dark. I had to turn the lights on on the car to light everything up. But here's what I'm using to take this shot. This is a Celestron C8 telescope. It has a 2032 millimeter focal length and the lens is set at f10. It also has an 8 inch diameter mirror on it and that's really good for gathering lots of light from deep space objects, planets, it's good for the moon. I think it's going to work really well for the uh, space station when it comes flying by. Another thing this telescope has that's really good is it has tracking motors on it. So right here is a tracking motor and what that does is I did something called a rough polar alignment. I point to the entire telescope at the North Star and then I turn on the tracking motor, so now as I'm waiting for the right moment to take the shot, the Earth's going to be rotating. This motor will counteract that rotation, and the moon will stay in the center of the camera's frame. I won't have to make all sorts of little adjustments to it while I'm waiting for the critical moment. So I have this whole thing here, then I have it on something called a T adapter, and that will, it's like an adapter that allows it to attach to the camera. The camera is a Canon 7D. It's a crop sensor, and I'm using this because it has a really high frame rate. I think it shoots around 8 frames a second. I have a Canon 6D that's not a crop sensor, but it has a little bit slower of a frame rate, so I'm going to use a 7D on this. Uh, I also have everything set to a remote trigger. 
and that way I'm not going to be touching the telescope. So, you know, if I went like this and used the shutter release on the camera, it might vibrate everything. But I'm going to just use this and there will be no vibrations. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. This is a something called a telecompressor. Now, you guys might have seen something like this. This is called a teleconverter. So the difference between these two is this is a lot of times you use in wildlife photography, and this will increase the focal length by 2x. This one is a, basically a focal reducer, and what this will do will re reduce the focal length by 0.63. And the reason I'm using this is because this is a crop sensor, and with this 2032 millimeter focal length, I'm going to be so zoomed in on the moon that the moon won't take up the entire frame. I thought it'd be cool to have the whole moon in the frame and make a pretty shot to hang on the wall. So I'm going to put this on and I'll attach a camera to that. So this will reduce it from 2032 millimeters times 0.63 on over that equals. It will reduce it and it also will turn it from f10 to f6.3 so it will gather light a little bit quicker. Now what I'm going to do, I'll tell you about the camera settings that I'm going to use. So I have it set at ISO 1600. I'm going to use a 1 16th hundredth of a second shutter speed and it will be set to f6.3. I'm going to turn it into live view mode and then I'm going to use the shutter release. Now the reason I'm using live view mode is because that raises the mirror and it's going to reduce something called mirror slap. So what mirror slap is is it's when you take a picture like this, here I'll turn it back into normal mode, when you take a picture you'll hear it. That's the mirror, it has to raise up and fall down every single time. And when you're zoomed in at high magnifications with a telescope like this, just that mirror slapping the top of the camera could cause it to vibrate just a little bit, it could blur the image, and we don't want that. So I'll turn into live view mode, that will raise the mirror, and now I'll be able to do this and no mirror slap, no vibration, especially because I'm using the cable release. So I think that's about the entire setup that I'm using here. I hope I didn't forget anything. I guess now what I'll do is I'll just wait for the moment to uh, take the picture and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I had to turn off all the lights on the car and everything so I could take the shot. I didn't want any light interfering with anything here, but I actually got the shot. Check this out. Here it is. So I was looking down and concentrating. And what I did is I looked at an app on my iPhone and I waited until about two seconds, one or two seconds before the ISS came by. And then I held down the cable release and I just took a whole bunch of shots, probably 20, 25, 30 shots. And I got the whole entire transit, which is very, very cool. Uh, after that, I finally looked up and you could see the space station just transiting and just flying across the sky. And it was super, super bright. It's like a really, really bright airplane, it looked like. And I think that was the sun reflecting off the solar panels. It's super cool. I tried to track the telescope, but it's moving too fast. And then as it moved across the sky, it got to about over there. And it just dimmed out, and that was about it. I want to point out a few interesting things that you can see in the photograph. Even though the image is a little small and blurry, you can still see a few interesting things. The easiest thing to pick out are the solar panels. Altogether, the solar arrays are made up of over 260,000 solar panels. Each solar array has a wingspan of 240 feet, which is longer than the wingspan of a Boeing 777. The two bright objects here are large heat rejection radiators. Heat generated from the station's electronics and life support systems is collected and transferred via a series of tubes containing liquid ammonia to the radiators where the heat is simply dissipated into space like an air conditioner. The radiators reflect a lot of light since they're painted with a highly reflective ceramic coating. Now I think that this part's really interesting. Right here you can see that there's a little bit of blue color on the space station. 
This is caused by something called earth shine, which is caused by sunlight reflecting the blue color of the earth back into space where it lands on the space station. I saturate the image using Photoshop and you can see that the entire top part of the space station is covered in this blue earth shine. You can also see that the bottom part is a golden brown color, which is probably from the gold colored solar panels reflecting light onto the bottom part of the space station. So I just want to thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. Uh, leave comments below. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a really cool experience. It's cool taking a picture of the space station. I think it worked out well. And uh, that's about it. So take it easy. Bye now. So I just thought I'd show you guys what everything looks like with the 2032 millimeter telescope with the 2x teleconverter and the crop sensor of the Canon 7D. So everything multiplied together, this gives 6,502.4 millimeters. And it was kind of hard for the, the, the camera wouldn't take any pictures because something I don't think it connected right with the teleconverter. But I could put it into movie mode, and I could try focusing a little bit, and that's what I did here. Now, it's really zoomed in a lot, and you can see a little bit of a mirage effect, a little bit of atmospheric distortion going on there. And that's just currents of air in the atmosphere kind of messing with the picture. And you can see that it's not moving very much, and that's because I have the tracking motor turned off.